Yes, Pastor Lugo, I'm, I'm, I'm want to explain a little bit about the Lima Lama and the traditional way Lima Lama was taught. Back then, Master Tino taught us how to do the hula. He taught us how to dragon shuffle, 45 shuffle, and we didn't do any forms. There was no forms of Lima Lama back in the day. Everything was one technique after the other. And it wasn't many techniques, just one or two techniques. And then he had us perfect, perfect, and perfect them. But after he did that, he would literally go outside the room and listen for our footwork. So when we did our 45 shuffle, or we did any move, or we were doing stomp on the ground, he would listen if it was correct. He didn't see if it was correct. He listened for it to see if it was correct. This is the way we were taught back in the day. So the Lima Lama that I see now, they do a lot of high kicking, spinning around, jump kicks, roundhouse kicks, all these kind of kicks. There is no such thing in true Lima Lama. Lima Lama was all about three major kicks. Low roundhouse, dragon heel kick, and windmill kick. And that was it those kind of kicks. Everything else was hand and manipulation, wrist manipulation. That was the most important thing in Lima Lama. That's why Lima Lama is connected to the hula and also connected to the lua. But people don't know that. So when I studied, I started back when I was 12 years old under Master Chino at the original school. How many students did Tino have? Master Chino had Many many teachers. I uh, who you who know you know the late Grandmaster Saul Kalawalu was one of the students. Richard Grandmaster Richard Nunes was also a student. Grandmaster Talbear was also a student, a teacher. How many original students Sai are there? Sai Sanya was an original teacher. This is who I this is who I trained with. Uncle Ted Tabora also was one of the original teachers of Lima Lama. When I studied, these were my teachers. These were all my teachers. This was from my family tree of Lima Lama, how I studied. So there was no tapping, no pads, no nothing. Everything was full contact. Everything, full contact, empty hand, legs, quick, taking you down, knocking you out. That's how we took it back in the day. What? I wanted to explain a little bit about that. What other martial arts styles come together to make Lima Lama? Lima Lama consists of, of many different styles. Kung Fu, Silam Kung Fu, because Grandma Chino Papa, he studied that art. That was from the Mangar Kung Ho. Uncle Tiny is trained from Ark Wong. Mark Wong, he took the Mangar Kung Ho, which is the five animal techniques and style in Eagle Claw, and took that and mixed it into the Lima Lama. And that's how he came up with Hamela Fiti Kung Fu. And that's Samoan style Kung Fu. And that's where the splashing hand comes from, the iron palm, the dim mark techniques. We were all taught this. And then later on, we were taught the finger sets from Master Tino. Papa was teaching the finger sets while he was out there in Diamond Bar. And the finger sets are all about the dim mark. And that's what people don't understand. So we trained very hard. He also took us as black belts as we, as we grew, he took us to the beach and we'd be out there on the cove and we'd be splashing on top of the big rocks, striking our hands full on, no gloves, hard. This was one of our training of the iron palm techniques and the splashing hand techniques. This is something that nobody trained except for the original group. And those were my teachers. That was my family from my family tree, which I have over here. As you can see, that's my family tree. All those teachers were my teachers. How many of these original students and teachers are still around? Almost all the teachers are gone. Richard was the last one. Now, of the traditional Lima Lama, I'm the last true teacher out of the original school. 
And now I'm trying to carry on Master Tino's true Lima Lama and stop watching everything else that's going on. So I'm, if anybody wants to study with me, they got to come. They will study real true Lima Lama. I will show them the, the truth of Lima Lama and how it moves, how quick it is, how fast it is. It was used to take somebody down quickly and fast without no effort. Leverage, control, speed, power. This is what Lima Lama is all about. That's why, like I said, it's connected to the hula and it's connected to the lula. Was Lima Lama used so it can be disguised in the dance? Yes, Lima Lama was disguised back in the day. And that's where the, that comes in where the hula comes in. This is where some of our snaps and our moves and our quickness is. And then the, the shuffling. The different shuffle, type of shuffle with the footwork. This is all Lima Lama. So your body would snap as you move. So is Lima Lama considered karate or kung fu? It's considered kung fu, not not karate. Hmm. Karate is different, different world. That's Kaji Kempo. What Lima, Lama, Lima Lama is all about kung, all about kung fu and the way of flow, the water way of flowing, like water, mo motion, moving, waves in the ocean. This is where Lima Lama started. What styles of Kung Fu make Lima Lama? Si Lam Kung Fu makes Lima Lama. That's the most important. Five animal styles of Ark Wong. Uncle Tiny trained with Ark Wong and he mixed Master Tino's Lima Lama with, with the Mongar Kung Ho and created Hao Me Lafiti Kung Fu. That's why his tiny Lafiti, and he named it after Hao Me Lafiti, Samoan style Kung Fu, not Samoan style karate. Samoan. Also, the, the good teachers that were there, they're all gone now. Every, all the teachers are, are dying. We just lost Richard. Richard Nunes, Grandmaster Richard Nunes, Grandmaster Tallbear, Grandmaster Saul Kalawalu. All these teachers which which made up in the beginning of Lima, true Lima Lama. And then they went on to develop their own systems, their own styles, Ilua Lima. Different styles like this. Matrix, like Garza. Garza, El Garza designed his matrix, but it's also Lima Lama. What is Lima Lama all about? It's all about, it was made for, literally for street fighting. Full combat, full techniques, full striking, bone breaking, muscle attacking, pressure points. This is what Lima Lama is. Striking fast, quick, enable, disabling your opponent within seconds. By the time you shoot, move one blow, we can throw 10. This is how Lima Lama flows, like water, and hits like a solid rock against the ocean. This is how much power Lima Lama has. It has beauty, grace, control, balance, leverage. Lima Lama has, also has judo in it. It has Aikido in it. These are the other elements that they added in later on that Papa ad added in later but in the beginning it came directly from his family then down here to us and I started when I was 12 years old with him that's how I got in I got into it and then after that my my sister married Grandmaster Tino's nephew Fidi Isaiah and Fidi became one of my instructors teaching me as I was young still and I trained with Papa for a long time, close to 30 years in Lima Lama. I started when I was 12 years old. And how long does one have to take before advancing to the next color belt in Lima Lama? In the beginning, the belts, you would sit every six months, every six months. But wow. when you get to your belt and when you are tested, 
you were tested directly outside in the alley or as a brown belt and a black belt you were taken to bars and tested at the bars back in the day that's how they tested us that's how we got our ranks we didn't get our ranks by a bunch of forms master tino papa did not make a bunch of forms in the, in the in back in the day he did techniques techniques combat combat everything was about taking away a knife taking away a stick taking away a club disarming fast dislocation breaking muscle attacking pressure pointing this is what lima lama is truly about flow rhythm timing speed and take your opponent out by the time he knows it to become a black belt in lima lama how much time must one put into this at least two and a half years I'm talking, and I'm talking after you get your black belt, then two and a half years in that black belt. But before to get your black belt, it take you about five, six years. It took me five years to get my first black belt, in the beginning. Then after that, I continued, continued, continued. Got battered by Papa, got battered by Master Tino, got battered by Uncle Tallbear, got battered by Saul Kohawali, Uncle Saul who I call all my uncles because they trained me since I was a kid. Taught me everything I know. So I want to pass on the arts the true way, the right way. Teach Lima Lama the correct way. So anybody that comes to me will learn the real tradition of Lima Lama, not what's out there now. I mean, I'm very disappointed at what's out there. And I'm very sad to see Grandmaster Tino's art being being demolished, taken away, the true part of it. It's okay to develop the Malama another way. Because that's for the Malama, you can. You can add to it. But you can't jump, jump, jump into it and not perf you got to perfect it correctly. It's like I said, it's an art that can take take you down very quickly very fast without no problem off of timing angles timing, angle distance leverage speed power this is all lima lama lima lama is designed to take on multiple targets at once multiple multiple attackers not just one or two in fact when i was a, when i was a kid myself i was really 16 i got attacked by 10 10 boy, 10 guys I took him on over here on Beach Boulevard in Chapman. I was getting an ice cream and I got jumped because I live in a Mexican barrio. So I took them down really quick and I sent five of them to the hospital. At what age again? I was 16 at the time. And then when I was 14, I got attacked in Santa Ana. I went to the store for my aunt. And a, and a man came out, about 20 years old, pulled the shotgun on me. And I disarmed his shotgun, took it away from him, and I broke his leg, his arm, his wrist. And that was from all Master, Master Tino's training. That's what kept me alive. That's what kept me going. And I'm still training the same way. I train the same way. I train hard. I train every day. I train constantly. I teach, and I teach the best way I can. The real way, a uh, true way of Lima Lama. Thank you. Other than Lima Lama, are there any other martial arts do you know? Yes, I, I studied many martial arts. In fact, I studied Shaolin Kung Fu with Grandmaster Nguyen since I was 10 years old. I have my master's, my red master sash under him. I studied Taekwondo with Master Kim. Got my black belt. I studied with Master George Fuji under Judo. I studied Vietnamese Kung Fu under Tang Bo Dak. I studied Aikido from Harry K. Ishida. I studied many different arts, many different arts. I did Eskrima, Kali under Ted Luka Lukai.
back in the day. I studied the Arnis under Grandmaster Sam Tennessee. How I'm many? Also, I'm also a Helot, Helot master. I studied the Helot, the healing from the Philippines for 15 years under Grandmaster Sam Tennessee. He taught me, he taught me that art. I trained under Grandmaster Ed Parker when I was eight years old. When I, when I studied there, I studied many different styles. So I'm now the chief international instructor of Lima Lama. What is this Anaheim police patch here? I was a police explorer back in the day when I was younger. I got a patch, a real Cobra, Cobra Kai patch from Pat Morita himself. Gave me that patch. I also did bodyguard and security for lots of years. I bodyguarded Bob Hope, Mick Jagger from the Stones, Jacqueline Smith back in the day. Jim Sepulveda was our captain and owner of bodyguard security and celebrity. I also trained under Grandmaster Dave Nuiva. Kaiko Gaku, that was his art. I taught Hula and Lua. And Grandmaster Dave Nuiva was 59th King of Hawaii, true King of Hawaii. Did you make all these weapons yourself? Yes. I designed all the, all the weapons of Lua. I was taught how to make them back in the day. I also stayed up in Samoa. I was up in the Samoa. I was out there for a couple years and I learned a lot of the Samoan fighting out there also. And then I was taught the Taya, the bow. I was taught all sorts of different weapons and I kept on with all the arts. Then. The last, I got into Copoeira, Brazilian martial art, under Brazil, see? Wow. Then I started Nijitsu back in 1986. And I got my fifth degree black belt, my Godan in Bujukan. My dojo is the Komoko Dojo. That's my, my first dawn, second dawn, third, fourth, and fifth. I picked up my fifth dawn from Kevin B. Millis from the Bujikan, Chihan. It was October 26, of last year. And I've been studying the arts ever since. And I'm still studying the arts. This is what I love to do. This is what I'm passionate about. This is my home away from home. How many years of martial art training do you have in your entire life? A lot. Like I said, I started boxing when I was four years old under, back in the day, under Manual Korea, Golden Gloves Boxer. So from age four, you began your self-defense training. I started boxing. Your first. I started boxing when I was four years old. Under Manual Korea. I boxed for a lot of years. Then I boxed under Carlos Palomino, world champion. I boxed in, in him from went in Westminster Gym. I boxed at the Staten Community Center. Boxing gym. Over here. I boxed in Santa Ana. Boxing gym. So I went from one thing to the next. I wanted to perfect and I always wanted to be a master, a real master, not a person that says, says they're a master, but a real true master of the arts. So I studied many, many different arts. I perfected everything that I know. I teach the best I can of my ability. When I was with Grandmaster Nguyen in the Shaolin, he taught me the drunken boxing. I know the drunken forms of boxing. That's me back when I was really 20. So I learned all the drunken Kung Fu. I learned six different animals in fighting. 
Ben, through all my teachers, Grandmaster Tino, Uncle Tiny, Grandmaster Nguyen, nicknamed me the Little Fierce Tiger. So that name stuck with me since I was a kid. So that's who I am. I'm the Little Fierce Tiger of martial arts. Thank you.